said myself. <laughs> you know, but uh, yeah, you know, it's Hollywood. It's Hollywood. I, I did a movie called uh, Leviathan, and Peter Weller was, you know, uh, and, and so the, we go through this thing, and then we get to the end, and then my character dies. And so, but I think uh, sometimes the studio, sometimes the, the guy who's starring in it wants to be the sole guy who survives. And, um, you know, I thought that was a mistake, you know, audiences would walk out because they were like, oh man, I knew it, you know, so, uh, you know, I, I don't know. But that was one of the fun parts of um, doing Congo, the movie, was because uh, the morning I get to be the guy who was the safari leader, you know, when I was a kid, all the uh, Tarzan movies, you know, if you're a black guy in that movie, you know you're going to, you'll be walking and a boulder is going to fall. <laughs> be a hungry lion who's going to eat you, you know what I mean, so you're going to die somewhere, you know, so, so that was fun, at least I, I, uh, I made it through comedy, but, um, but yeah, no, it's, 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 it's Hollywood and how we, you know, I, I don't know if it's consciously, uh, I don't like to go, whatever, I don't, I don't know, I mean, I can't answer the question, it's just, you know, it is sort of, but I, I think the, I remember to see Jurassic Park 3, was it? Yeah. You know, and, uh, and and you're right, your brother came uh, right in the beginning. And then we're like, I wonder why I wasn't up at that party. And as soon as I said that, he was dead. <laughs> so yeah, it does seem to happen a lot. But most things are changing, you know. It's, uh, it's okay. Uh, so we go. Oh, just one small one. Who used to be so, so hard to make us believe with us? Great. I'm wondering if you've got any... Uh, Good stories, hopefully, about people who got a little bit confused about who you are. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Any of your characters, they just get you confused. Yeah, I get confused with who I am. <laughs> um, yeah, people sometimes, you know, they, they see, because I think movies are, it's not just the visual, you know. We, we see things, people remind us of things, it touches us in a place, that, and I'm, an unconscious place. And people fall in love with people, hate people, stalk people because they, they, you know, left their wife in the movie, you know. But, uh, so, yeah, but that, that's always a little bit of a problem. You know, some of the people really do. I, I was MSNBC, and I can't remember the, the host name, but there was a talk show. It was during the time that Bill Clinton was president. And he uh, was being impeached for the whole, and so they asked me to come on the show, and it was a political show, and I thought it was kind of odd that they, but sure, I, I'll go on the show. So I, I go on the show, and we're talking, and they had another, um, an attorney, and uh, uh, I think a, a judge or something, and they asked me what I thought of Bill Clinton, and I said, well, you know, I, I think everybody makes mistakes, and the host said, that's not what you, you say, you know, on your show. And I said, well, what show? And she says, Oz. And, and I realized they thought I was a warden. I mean, this is, this is MSNBC. I'm like, no, and, and then you realize, and then, so she was like, uh, but he, he's not the warden. And then, so she was like, uh, no, I'm not a warden. So, you know, I, I don't know, but it's, people do make that. So, but, um, yeah, I, I think you get into it because you think beautiful, you know, sexy women are going to, you know, confuse you with actually think they're in love. That hasn't happened yet. But, uh, yeah, no, I, I um, but it, it is an interesting, uh, you know, interesting business. I mean, when people perceive, and sometimes you see a guy who play a certain type, and it's not at all who he is, but that's how people perceive him. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, many other kind Yeah, I had a question. Yeah. Is it different from a story with the Uh, yeah, there's a steady paycheck in it. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's sad. I said that line in the movie, but I actually, <laughs> it's sort of the model of my life, I guess. I mean, I, I, you know, if it's, uh, unless it's something I really hate, there have been a few things that I kind of go, you know, I don't want to do that. Uh, there was a thing about, uh, I think, the living guy, and, uh, I'm sorry, what? 
I did, yeah, Transformers Prime, yeah, and it's a, and I love Transformers Prime. So it's a good show, and it's a, you know, it's a good, yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll, sure, I'd love to be in it. Um, yeah, I mean, I, 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 I kind of look at it more on the work side, you know, and try not to take it personal. But like I said, there have been a few things where I just want, uh, I just didn't want to do. But another actor was quickly to step into the, that's, you know, it, it's all, it's a personal thing. But Transformers Prime, I love it. Yeah, that's another question. Uh, do you think Slimer's an annoying character? <laughs> uh, I never thought of him as a character, but, uh, <laughs> but, uh, but no, I, I'm, I'm, kids like Slimer, he's very popular, and uh, I'm very happy that he was there. I hope he's in, if there is another one. Uh, okay, well, there you go. <laughs> Actually, that, I, that, that sort of begs a question I have, because I heard that there's another Ghostbusters that they're talking about doing. Yeah, yeah, you guys know anything about it? Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to get some information. Uh, I, you know, I would get calls from the studio, that, and they said, well, it looks like we're going to go, and they'd give me a time, and then they would flake out. And then I read somewhere where they said Ernie Hudson, somebody from the studio, an anonymous, said Ernie Hudson keeps calling the studio. <laughs> so I just didn't even long. I'm like, you know what? You know where I am. You know, I'd love to do it. You know, if the money's right. <laughs> you know, so uh, no, I don't know. I mean, I don't know why it's taking so long. I talked to all the guys. I know they blame Bill Murray, but sometimes there are other things at play. I can't imagine it's just Bill Murray, so, um, you know, um, but I, but the, you guys have been great, the fans have been great, and I'd love to see the movie happen, um, but I'm not going to wait for it, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not waiting for it, okay, in the back of the sunglasses. Who's your favorite director to work with? Who's, I'm sorry? Who is your favorite director to work with? Um, um, Curtis Hansen, who directed The Hand of Rocks the Cradle. I thought Curtis was a director's can be very, um, uh, a director knows how to communicate with actors, it can be a lot of fun, and they can really help you. You know, sometimes a director, there's a, a movie now uh, that's playing, just premiered last night in a lifetime called, um, um, uh, the name of it, um, Call Me Crazy. And uh, uh, Jennifer Hudson played my daughter, Ashley Judd directed it, Jennifer Anderson produced it. And uh, Ashley Judd, in her directing, um, sometimes it's hard for me to kind of be clear on what her suggestions were because it's really suggestions. So you do, do I go with what I'm feeling or do I trust you to sort of step out here? And when I saw the movie, I think it was, I made a, uh, a bad choice. And as an actor, that bothers you because I go, you know what, I really should have. He was a military father and I was so focused on just being a good father that I forgot the military side. That's what I'm thinking. So, um, so it's, uh, directors are very, very important. Um, I was talking at a um, New York University. They have uh, schools in New York, Los Angeles, and I think Australia. And they were doing a simultaneous broadcast and they asked me to come and talk to the students. And, um, and I did. And uh, a young man got up to the mic and asked me what was my worst uh, experience working with a director. And, I said, well, you know, um, I did this one show and it really, really sucked. And this director, I mean, this director was like the worst. I mean, I hated this guy. And I, I got into it. I wanted to explain how bad this guy was and how stupid he was. And when I finished, the kid said, that's my dad. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I felt the same way. So I never mentioned shows in particular. I just, <laughs> So, hey, right, um, yeah, but, um, yeah, so uh, Curtis Hansen, though, Henry Ross Cradle, and Martin Campbell, who just directed me on a pilot for ABC, we just finished it, and, uh, I got money, you know, but, uh, see if, um, can, you see if they have some can we get, can we get them in some tissues? Yeah. Oh, uh, all right, so. <laughs> Saves the day. <laughs> Thank you. There we go. You who come by my table and shook my hand are now worried. So. <laughs> but, but um, yeah, uh, Martin Campbell, we just directed a pilot for ABC. It was called Reckless, I think they're changing the name. Um, and I think it'll get picked up. It looks, looks pretty good. 
So uh, he's finished with shot in New Orleans. Uh, but Martin is, is great. And uh, there's nothing like working with a really good director. But when you get a bad director, and mostly a bad director is a guy who either can't communicate with an actor because he doesn't know how to ask for what he wants, or he just feels he needs to be doing something. You know, he, he's nothing he can help you with, but he thinks he should say something because he's a director. Um, so, I mean, I don't know if I answered the question, but, but, but I like those. Yeah. Um, but most directors uh, are, are good. You know. um, the hand that rocks the cradle. I got so angry at Rebecca De Mornay when you got you. Yeah. And I was like, oh, that bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Ernie Hudson, I had a quick question for you. What's your, uh, since you've been, you're such a big, you're so famous for like Ghostbusters and stuff like that, do you have like a favorite, um, a favorite type of, of character to play? You're more like that creepy kind of mysterious kind of guy? Or like, do you go more of like the, the, um, the just kind of out there kind of character? Like what's your, do you have like a favorite type okay. of? What, uh, what exactly do you mean by creepy sort of <laughs> You know, I, I think as an actor, for me, I came in, became an actor because I like acting, I like taking on roles. Hollywood doesn't really work that way very well. I mean, it likes you to do something and do it really well. So if you're the big guy and you're, if you're lucky enough to be the action hero or be the bodyguard type, but it wants to lock you into a certain place. And so when I get a chance to do something different, like the Hannah Rocks the Cradle, which was a very different group, uh, Disney, who produced it, they felt that no one would believe that I, being with my physicality, would let a woman sort of slap me and not retaliate. Which I put, I put the guy's mentally disabled, but, you know, so how do you, you, you know. Or the role in Congo, it was a very different character. So I like different, uh, I like playing different characters. And so sometimes a guy's not a nice guy or whatever, but it's very hard for me to play a character that I don't like, though. Mm -hmm. That's the problem I have. You know, I, I think there's part of me that wants to believe that that there's some level of uh, sanity in the middle of insanity. That if a guy does some really horrible, horrible thing, that on some level, maybe you could make sense. If you knew what he knew, it would make sense to you. It's hard for me to believe that there are people who are just committed to evil just for evil. And maybe there are, I mean, I'm sure. I'm, I'm kind of naive, I will admit, my life has been, you know, I mean, I, 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 I do still believe in, you know, Disney fairy tales. I mean, that's kind of a, uh, so, but, um, but, but I haven't played a character like that. All the characters I play, I kind of, you know, I kind of think I understand or I, I, I like. Um, but that's just me, and I know it's me. As I got, got older, I realized everybody don't see the world in the same way. Um, so, yeah. Well, now that, all right, vocal <laughs> over. Um, because you mentioned Congo, and I remember when I read, uh, you know, Michael Clayton's book, right. it was pretty clear that, you know, Monroe was white dude, you know, right, so I, right, I, yeah. but I mean, I loved you in that movie. Right. How, did you, how did you end up getting that role, you know, given the way the character had been written? Well, I think they wanted to make one of the characters black. Um, <laughs> I mean, that helped, you know, they helped. <laughs> if they had made that decision, then it would have been that. Because sometimes, well, the Hand Rocks the character was white. He was um, uh, five foot seven, that's how the script described it, five foot seven Irish with freckle, freckles. <laughs> and so um, I couldn't get an interview. I read the script and I thought, wow, I really want to, I really want to do this character. But uh, they, I couldn't get an interview because uh, it was, it was, uh, the character was white. Um, and it took place in the South. So once they, and then they were looking at people who really were mentally disabled. And uh, I saw when I, I went into the first interview with Curtis Hansen, I sort of won him over. And he gave me a tape of the people they had auditioned, the people who were mentally disabled. And you hear that you saw the people come in and they were just frustrated, it didn't work out, it didn't work out. And then finally they got a guy who came in and he was really good. I mean, really, really good. And, uh, and you could hear them get excited behind the camera. So, wow, that's really good. Now, uh, you know, can you stand up and do it? And he said, no. So that's when the tape ended. They didn't see more people because they realized they had to get an actor. So once they opened it up to getting actors, 
then it, I think they, it sort of opened. And when I finally got the interview, I was able to convince them. Now, it went from being in the South because they felt if I was a mentally disabled guy in the South, some people might be offended because they would think they're making a statement about black men. I don't feel that way, but somebody is thinking this way. So it then it went from the South to Washington, and then it was okay. So a series of things sort of happened that, um, and I ended up um, getting getting the part because it was meant to be played part, I guess. Um, I don't know if that, that dealt with, I, don't, I can't remember what the question was. But, um, <laughs> no, but it did, thank you. Yeah. Right. Sir. Uh, what was it like working on the Ghostbusters video game, and is there any plan for a sequel? Yeah, you know, um, I hadn't heard any plans for the sequel. Danny and Harold, I think, had gotten so, Danny Aykroyd and Harold Ramis, had gotten so frustrated with trying to get the second, I mean, the third movie, that they said, this is going to be our third movie, and they wrote most of the video game, I understand. Um, but the video game turned out to be, you know, very successful, and that's when the real serious talk about the Ghostbusters 3 started to happen. But it's still being, you know, uh, delayed. It was great being part of it. Great being included. Um, and some things, you know, I'll get me honest. Like the ride at Universal. I don't know if my character would have been included had it not been for Bill Murray. So when I hear people talk about how crazy Bill Murray is, yeah, he is crazy. But um, <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I love Bill Murray, and I, and I will say he's always sort of stepped up and say, hey, wait a minute. Even sometimes when we're doing scenes, he would say, wait, no, no, no. What about Ernie? So that line in the movie about I love this town, it was Bill Murray saying, no, wait, wait, you know, because they were grabbing, you know, the guy, and I'm like tagging along, going, okay, what am I doing here? <laughs> and uh, so, um, so Bill has been, um, really, really has always been very supportive, and, uh, and I, I really appreciate that. Okay, let's, let's get somebody, do we have any questions on the other? Me? Yes. <laughs> do you approach the work differently for something like, Ghostbusters or Lackawanna Blues? Yeah, because, you know, the characters, are, you know, are different. And the character in Lackawanna Blues was this old kind of blues guy. He was a gambler. He was and kind gorgeous. of... And <laughs> 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 um, You know, I, I never see myself a certain way because I, I, I didn't grow up thinking of myself a certain way. But some, so, sometimes a character is cooler than you are. You know what I mean? Sometimes, uh, I did the Great White Hope for a couple of years. And the Great White Hope, the character was the heavyweight champion of the world, my head was shaved, and women just loved this guy. So when I was in character, surprise, women kind of responded. You know, people, it was like he was bigger than life, and I liked being that guy. But when I was Ernie Hudson, it just kind of dissipated. <laughs> when, I, when, I, when I was Jack Johnson, I literally, honestly, guy, I'd walk into a bank, and if there was a line, people would go, Oh, uh, you can go ahead. <laughs> Part of it had to do with being bigger than life and being intimidated, and that, you know, they let me get in front of line. When I'm me, it's like, don't even think about it. <laughs> so I think sometimes characters are um, more interesting than you are as a person. And I, I like that character a lot. But, um, but I think you read a character and you just get a, an intuitive feeling about who the guy is. I mean, you just kind of, you know, and I think. That's because they're all you, but they're all a part of you. Had life been different in different circumstances? Had you grown up with, you know, in a you know single family home as opposed to a big family? All those things sort of shape a little bit about how we are. And um, yeah, so that's kind of a, a little bit like I, I think uh, buying suits off the rack. You know, you have to kind of. Adjust your shoulders, and make them fit right. <laughs> you know, as opposed to having them tailor made. I haven't had a role that's been tailor made for me yet. Uh, that'd be fun. Uh, budding writers. Take note. <laughs> okay, uh, sir. Me? Yes. Um, so you started in movies with other people that come to cons, like in Congo, Bruce Campbell, and other other movies like that. Do you ever get together and? you know, jostle each other, be like, hey, do you see my line? It's much bigger than yours, or is it just mostly? <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, maybe some people do. Um, I think it, it helps if you smoke a joint and do that. <laughs> Since I don't smoke, I mean, I, uh, you know, I, I like to think I'm like a really, really friendly guy, and then I had someone say, you know, no, you're not friendly, you're cordial. So, 
I don't know how to take that still. <laughs> but I, 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 I'm sure people do kind of, you know, I, but I don't tend to get that from people, kind of. Um, and maybe because I'm old too or something, I don't know. But I, I don't, you know, I'm not a real practical joker, kind of. Uh, I mean, I like to laugh and, you know, and tell jokes, but I just don't, I don't get putting, you know, glue in somebody's shoes, you know. Somebody. <laughs> <laughs> that makes no sense to me, but um, so yeah, I'm sure some some people do, but uh, and also acting is very sensitive. You know, if you if you're playing the lead in something and somebody has a small parts, you don't go, "Hey man, my part's bigger than yours." You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> a little insensitive, you know. Uh, uh, yeah, certain things. Yeah. 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 Any special memories from when you were on Taxi? Yeah, you know, Taxi, uh, I don't know if you guys saw the episode, Tony Danza is, wants to be a promoter and I'm a boxer and he wants to manage me and we have this one scene where we're eating a pizza where we, our mouths are full of stuff and we're talking over that. Um, but I, I went to audition for the part and uh, I sort of pumped up but I boiled my body up and I went in and, uh, and I read and they didn't seem very interested. And I was leaving uh, the room, walking down the street on uh, Paramount Studios, and Tony Danza was there. So he said, hey, how did, how did it go? And, and I didn't really know him. And uh, so I said, it went okay. He says, uh, he said, you read? I said, yeah. He said, uh, you, you didn't think it went well? I said, no, I thought it went well. I just didn't. So he says, come on. So he went back into the uh, uh, room with me, and we read it together, and I got the part. And uh, I've, I've known him now for, that was, 35 years ago, but uh, um, but it, it, was, it was just very generous. I thought very very kind of him to do it. We, you know, he's he's a great guy. But um, sometimes people you know, can do these amazing acts of generosity. I thought it was very generous of him to do that. Um, and um, uh, Andy Kaufman was was a little odd. He was working as a busboy. Um, at Jerry's uh, Deli while we were shooting. I mean, he was, he was a regular on the series, but he could only work two days because the rest of the time he was working as a bus boy. So. <laughs> um, but it was uh, Mary Lou Henner, I see her a lot. I saw her recently. Uh, uh, yeah, so it was a good group. It was a good, good group, a good show to work on. In the, in the TV show site, um, one episode you played, one of the main characters, Dad. Gus's dad, yeah. But then in a later season, someone else played Gus's dad? Yeah. So I was wondering if they came to you and asked you to do it again and you couldn't, or if they just recast it without telling you at all? Yeah, no, they came to me and asked me to do, they wanted to do um, um, another show. And I was working on something, and I, it was a few days conflict. So I thought they'd work it out, but instead they got to keep that. Um, because I guess they thought we looked alike. And <laughs> You know, it's, yeah, I really do think they thought that. And so uh, I was working in Los Angeles and I saw the producer of Sight who came up to me and said, hey, Ernie, it's great to see you, man. We're going to have you back on the show. And I'm like, wait, wait, how are you going to have me back on the show? We need to have another guy playing my part. He said, what make, make any difference? That's <laughs> really good to say that. And I go, okay, sure, you have me on the show. Now get the hell away from me. <laughs> Yeah, you know, we'll all switch up for sure. You know. That's right. Yeah. yeah, who's the real dad? Yeah. So, so I, I, yeah, yeah, I, it's strange. It's uh, that was very odd. Cause I, I like the guys. I like the show, but I, uh, that was very. So, okay, we have somebody in the yeah. You there? Yeah. Uh, how was working with uh, and why we best with that? Yeah, you know, best of the best. Uh, Philip Reed, uh, uh, Simon Reed, is a, he does a lot of um, uh, stunt coordinating, a lot of movies, and he's my martial arts instructor. I've been studying martial arts for about 30 years. I've, I've gone about three days a year. Um, <laughs> I mean, I get, I get in shape if I need to be in shape for a part, and I'll learn something that to, enough to make you believe that I actually do this stuff. But, so, but I've known Philip and, I'm, and uh, Simon, his brother, their brothers. Um, but Philip produced and directed and starred in that film. And, um, uh, and, and, and we had a good time, but he came to me after he put it together and he said, Ernie, uh, I said, man, you know, we had a fight scene where, of course, in these fight scenes, I have to lose because it's 
it's written that I lose. I hate that. I hate working with that. I hate that. But sometimes I'll be, I'll be work, I was working with uh, Joy Montaigne, and Joy's a good friend, very good friend of mine. But uh, we had a, a, a chase scene. He's playing, uh, he's playing uh, Spencer, and I'm uh, Hawk. And so we got a, a chase scene, but the guy can't run very fast. So now I'm, I'm almost running in place. <laughs> So I can let this guy win the race. <laughs> um, but at any rate, uh, Philip said, uh, he said, Ernie, <laughs> it's, uh, I look like a little kid because, you know, because it just physically. And, <laughs> because, you know, you, you know, I, I look at an actor and I go, you know I can kick ass. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to do this. I know I'm ready, you know, but don't get carried away because I don't play. Now, hey, what's up? <laughs> so, anyway, um, did you preach it again for a long time? Um, so, I've always loved the movies, but what has become a favorite thing for me for the last several years, like years now, right. is seeing you pop up in random cameos in some of my favorite TV shows. Oh, that's Friday good. And Bash. I love your role back with kids, all these different things. And I know some of the stuff that's coming up, um, you mentioned the TV show that's coming, but I was wondering what else. What's coming up soon? Yeah, well, the uh, I, did, I mentioned the thing with Jennifer Hudson yes. plays my daughter. Um, um, whatever the name of it is, <laughs> <laughs> call me crazy. Yeah. So that's uh, that's playing now, and uh, I did one. Uh, we shot it in Georgia called uh, Pastor Brown, that's been playing on Lifetime. But uh, 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 oh, the Hillary Swank movie. Hillary Swank and me roll some Josh Dumay. Whatever, uh, uh, Josh. Uh, yeah, anyway, we, we uh, it's called um, uh, You're Not You, and uh, it's coming out this fall, and it should be a big film. Uh, and uh, pilot, you know, I say busy. A uh, final resort was, um, you know, I, I do, I'm an actor, and so what's happened now that I've reconciled, I'm not going to become this huge blockbuster, whatever. I shouldn't say not become anything possible, <laughs> you know. but um, but assuming that doesn't happen, and what's important for me is that that I stay active. A lot of times, people will come up. In fact, uh, I went to a Walgreens drugstore last night, and sometimes I can walk in the store, and nobody notices. I just sort of go right through. And sometimes I go in there, and people off the street will come in, and I'm taking photos, and everybody works there. But one of the guys who works there is a comedian. But he wants to be an actor, so he spends 15 minutes. I just want, you know, I just want to get what I want to get and get out of here. <laughs> but, uh, but what I was telling him is, I think if you're an actor, then you should act. You know, it's. Uh, I've had friends who would wait a year, year and a half for the right role. I can't do that. I need to work. You know, and um, so that's why I do a lot of. You know, so well, we want you to be a judge. I'm like, okay, I'm going to judge. I'll be the judge or whatever, because I, I need to. I, I need to do what I do. I think. Um, if you're a comedian, you should be on stage, you know. I, I think it's, so many people are waiting for that, that right thing to happen. And, uh, when I started acting, uh, I, I, I got married at 18, and I was a single parent. And when the marriage was over, um, <laughs> thank God. Um, <laughs> but what I didn't realize was that, uh, that the kids stayed with me. You know, I was assumed that women took kids, man. It's like if everybody told me that, I'd be like, whoa, wait, I don't know, what do you mean? You know, what? So, but they came with me, and which is the best thing that ever happened to me. But I always had to pay the rent. I've always had to feed my kids. I always had to kind of, you know, if I'm working and we wrap at five, I got to be home because I got kids at home. So, um, I don't even know what your question was. But. <laughs> But so I'm coming, yeah. So there's there's a lot of things that um, there's a few things that we can. I did something about oh, sucks. Uh, uh, terror dogs, fight, uh, fighting dogs. Of, uh, uh, it was on sci-fi. <laughs> you, you see that? Yeah. It was like they were kind of supposed to be werewolves, but they looked like pigs. I mean, it was kind of you know werewolf pigs, I guess. They had long snort and uh, and they jumped around and they. 
Um, so that has been really playing. So I so I do so I, I might pop up anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, you know, I, I didn't take it over, I just saw her. Really. Okay. Right. Take another one for me. It's coming about video games. I know the most recent ones you finally were included. I know in a lot of ones in the past, they were excluded your character. And like you said, you thought you were getting left out of the ride. Is there any specific reason you put your finger on or anything you can express as to why that like, happens to the Winston's character? Specifically, you know, in terms of Ghostbusters? Okay, so, but I'm sure we do. The it's question. like in, uh, in like the older video games, Winston wasn't even in the game. Oh, okay. You thought you were going to get excluded from the night universal. Oh, why? It's always a yeah. little bit of a, um, it's like the second movie when, um, in the first movie, in the first movie, when I first got the script for Ghostbusters, I came in on page six in the very beginning of the movie, and so the characters all the way through. But then once I went through rehearsal, they decided to bring me on page 68. So the movie's halfway done, and then I sort of pop up. And in the second movie, when they could actually have made it right, <laughs> they have me in the first scene, and then I disappear until half the movie's gone. I'm not sure, you know, but, um, you know, I think when you're African-American, you want to blame everything on being black. You know what I mean? Because like, I'm black, I know damn well, that's why I am. Anything, I don't care, you know. Um, you know, any, anything that happens in life, you can blame it on that. But I don't, I don't know if it's that. I'm not saying it's not that either. <laughs> but, um, you know, sometimes it's personal. You know, sometimes people just don't like you. You know, it's like, uh, so I don't know. I, I, um, yeah, I don't know. Who knows? I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know why. That, I think it would have made more sense. When, when, I, I, when the movie was, uh, came out, I used to go to schools and, and to elementary schools and talk to kids because the kids were playing Ghostbusters. And, Teachers loved it because nobody beat anybody up. It was sort of an <laughs> imaginary ghost, you know. And, uh, and so I would make kids honorary Ghostbusters. But the kids would always say, well, where does Winston go? And, and I said, what do you mean? But because we kind of know Bill Murray has a talk show. We kind of know a little background about who is Winston? I mean, what is he, does he have family? Does he, does he, where does he go when he's not, he pops up and he's there and then he disappears? <laughs> And I had to say, I have no clue what I'm going to say. Well, in the video game, I think they made me a doctor now. And so they, they gave me a little background. But originally, he was uh, an Air Force colonel who had, was a demolitions expert. And there was a whole lot of backstory that ended up being cut. And I ended up saying, hey, man, I'm just looking for a job. You know? <laughs> but it's all good. It all works out. Uh, and the poster, you know, you have no idea how I used to hate signing that damn poster that I'm working on. <laughs> you know. And then I say, Ernie, you know, we got this thing at Bullock's department store, and so uh, we really would love it if you would come in. Uh, and I used to think that if I be nice, they'll give me a job. It has nothing to do with giving you a job. So they sent an ectomobile by my house to pick me up. And then the brakes would go out, and then we am standing on the street, and the car wouldn't work. and. Um, but, uh, but, you know, who knows? Maybe it's just, uh, you know, when they say you're a nice guy in Hollywood, that's really kind of an insult. <laughs> you know, it's not meant to be a compliment. It's, uh, but I, I don't know, you know, who you are who you are, and it is what it is. And at the end of the day, you know, uh, you blow your nose and say thanks. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, could, you, oh, me? could you talk a little bit about, um, like, you talked about getting in shape for a role? But like you work out, like how do you, you have to stay in shape obviously, but like could you just talk about workout, like could you give workout tips and nutrition, like how do you, you know, yeah. I'm sure, you know, you've heard about all this food Yeah, a lot, of, a, lot of, uh, a lot of actors, you know, we, uh, when I go to my hometown, in fact I have my 50 year class reunion coming up next year. And uh, when I went to my 40 year reunion, uh, man I was surprised how people really kind of looked uh, up there. It didn't look so good. <laughs> so I'm, I'm making it a point to get in shape. <laughs> Just go back. Just mess with them, you know. So. <laughs> no, you know. So when they say, "Wow, well, you 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 haven't changed much," I go, <laughs> "Well, you you haven't." Uh, anyway. <laughs> uh, I, I think it's important that, uh, especially especially if you're African American, 
whatever disease there is, however bad it is, it's ten times worse. <laughs> whatever reason, I mean, maybe God has a sense of humor, I don't know, but uh, <laughs> high blood pressure, you're going to have it worse, you know. <laughs> Prostate cancer, they have a, a, a treatment called watchful waiting. Well, that only applies to white men. If you're black, you'll be dead in like two years. You know? I'm serious, I know it sounds like a joke, but it's true. It's very aggressive. The diabetes, you can go on and on and on, and part of it has to do with, most of it is with diet, I think, and a lot of it has to do with just, but you really have to establish, now I'm, I'm, giving, now I'm giving my choice, you really have to establish um, habit. And, you, and, and it's consistent. It's not a lot, it's just doing a little bit, you know, just a little bit of routine over a long period of time, you know, those habits will come back to haunt you. Good habits, bad habits, doesn't matter, they're gonna come back to haunt you. I mean, I, I do my green smoothies, you see, I'm, I'm still, you know, <laughs> my greens, my fruits, you gotta get that stuff in, and, and you have to do it every day. So, um, it, it won't get better, and there's no time when it's gonna be, you know, when you'll have time to do it, because you'll never have time to do it. So, my thing is just, um, <coughs> Yeah, you know, and uh, and the biggest thing is, you know, love yourself. You know, I mean, you gotta love yourself, man. It's, uh, you work with a trainer? And you, uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, because I don't push myself. You know, uh, this may sound a little extreme, but um, I have a masseuse who's really good. I see my masseuse on Sunday, Sunday afternoon. I, I go to the gym, I sit in the steam room and the whole thing, and then I see my masseuse. And on Monday, I have a guy who's a former Navy SEAL. He does his cross training. So I'm with him for about an hour, hour and a half. And he does the ropes and the balls and the holes. It's ridiculous. And I go, and I, I hate him. But <laughs> I do it anyway. And then on Tuesday, I run for about anywhere from 20 to 30 minutes. And then on Wednesday, I have a Pilates uh, instructor. And she stretches me and does this stuff on these machines, which is supposed to long gate thing, but I don't know. Anyway, I do it anyway because, and then on Thursday I run, and then on Friday I have a guy who is um, a martial artist, but he does a lot of weight stuff, and I see him. And on Saturday, um, I run again. And so, now I don't do that all the time. If I'm working, uh, I eat pizza and I, you know, <laughs> but if I'm working, it's kind of hard, but when I'm at home, that's kind of, that's what I do. That's pretty much what I do. Um, but, but I don't think anybody has to be that good. I see these uh, different people because when I was seeing one trainer like three times a week, I got to a point where I hated them. So I can see him one time a week. I see the one guy on Friday and that's all I want to see him. <laughs> I can, you know, um, but I think it helps me to have somebody to push me. I can't, I can't push myself. Um, or I don't like that. And it's not that much money. You'd be amazed. You can go to the gym, you can get a trainer, probably about 50 bucks a session, 60 bucks a session. Sometimes you can work it, work it out cheaper than that. But it, uh, it's worth it in the long run. So I, I definitely think you have to take care of yourself. Uh, do you have a preference working between <coughs> TV and cinematic movies and say like making TV movies like sci-fi and lifetime? And like what are kind of the differences good and bad between the dynamic of three? Okay, so the, the three being movies? Cinematic movies, made for TV movies, like sci-fi or lifetime, and then like television shows. Okay, you well... Know, you have a preference of the three, and like what are kind of the reasoning time? Well, the only preference I have is if you get a, if you get a studio movie, assuming, because not everybody cries about money, you know, the economy, I mean, any excuse to not pay you. <laughs> but, um, but there's a big difference in the budgets. So if you're on a Ghostbuster movie and it got two hundred million dollars, it's you know, going to be a lot different than if you're making a movie, you know, shooting like that uh, Dog Fighters or whatever it's called, uh, Battle Dogs. I'm sorry. Yeah. Oh, oh the okay, yeah. And then I did not say the name because I didn't like the movie. I just, I just kind of, I can't remember. <laughs> But uh, no, I don't need to see it. I, I, I live in it. Uh, <laughs> but thank you. Oh yeah, no, no, thank you. Yeah, battle dog. So, um, but they have they have very little money. So little money means that um, you're not going to have the support. You're not going to have the you know. It's you know. It's just it's, it's about money. You know, and it's nice to do when you got the fun toys like Ghostbusters. We can you know and. 
that's probably the biggest difference. And with no money means you have no time. So we can take all day and shoot this scene, or we can shoot this scene and ten others before the day's over. You know, so uh, yeah. So that I think that's probably the other than that, you know, it's it's all good. You know, TV or whatever. TV is faster than film, but sometimes it's okay. TV I like because every week you bring in a different. Uh, you know, cast, you work with a lot of different people. It's, you really get a chance as an actor, I think, to grow and try and do some stuff. And um, with the movie, obviously, it's a set cast. So there's some differences, voiceover stuff, but it's all work and it's all, it's all fun. It's a great gig if you can get it. Um, and it really sucks if you can't. Um, Have you ever thought about doing like a Broadway or music? Yeah, you know, I, I do play. I've been working on a play uh, based on life of Jack Johnson um, that I thought we were going to be in production now, but it's been pushed back a little bit. Um, and uh, he was an amazing, amazing guy. I, I was on Broadway uh, a couple years ago, I guess a couple years ago, two or three years ago. Um, Joe Turner's come and gone. The, the play that the president came to see, yeah, and we got so much heat when he came to Broadway and he talked about it. Yeah. Anyway, so, but, uh, so, yeah, I mean, I love theater, and when I get a chance to, the problem with theater, it just doesn't, doesn't pay, you know, and if you're smart, and you, if you're going to be an artist, keep your expenses down. If you buy into the exclusive neighborhood, and you get the multi-million dollar house, and you get the big car, you're going to pay for that. <laughs> And suddenly, when Ghostbusters 3 get delayed. <laughs> so, uh, you know, and you say, you know what, it doesn't matter. I'm just going to be at peace with it. I don't care. But when your wife is crying, <laughs> this is all there is. <laughs> it's not a happy scenario. So. Okay, I'm done with it. Uh, with the uh, mustache and beard, sir. Can you speak about Jason Jackson making The Crow? Yeah, The Crow was, uh, yeah, I knew Brandon Lee for about eight years. Miguel Ferrar, who did, um, what was that show? Not Slanty, was it? Uh, I did the show and I can't remember the name of it. <laughs> Thank God I can still remember lines. <laughs> but uh, with Miguel Ferrar, we, we were doing a, a pilot in Vancouver a number of years ago, and Miguel grew up with Brandon Lee and, um, they were, they were good friends. So Brandon was coming back from China after shooting something over there. And he hung out for a couple of weeks and, and we became friends. And then when we did The Crow, I really, really liked Brandon a lot. And, and I don't just say that, I thought he was a great guy. Um, I thought if anything, it was too giving because, you know, when I got down there, I, I went down about a week after they had started shooting. And the night, we're shooting nights in North Carolina, which is, you know, in the winter, it, it can get cold. It got so cold that the, the bird, they had to take the bird off the set because they were afraid of the bird, you know, getting sick. But Brandon's walking around with no shirt on, no shoes on. And I'm like, dude, where's the heaters? And they didn't have heaters on the set. Uh, they did have I got there, but, um, but he didn't want to complain. And I always felt that if he had really been a little bit more uh, of a complainer, they would have checked the gun and maybe he'd still be around. So. Um, yeah, you know, I, I, it's still very hard for me to wrap my head around what happened on The Crow. Um, but I thought it, it turned out to be a, a good movie, um, you know, but it's just, it's just awful that what happened. You know. I want to ask a question. Um, you know, I know you have two older kids, and I know you have a that they will grow up without basketball. Mm -hmm. And uh, are you ever afraid of ghosts? You know, I went to a premiere uh, of a friend's movie, and um, a TMZ was there, and they were asking if, they, if I'd do an interview, so I thought, okay. So I gave them the interview, and then about halfway through the interview, the guy started saying, hey, I don't see any ghosts, see any ghosts, see any. So I was like, and I go, you know what, I said, dude, first off, uh, you know, I'm not, you know, I, I'm not into that, okay? So you got any ghosts, you got any ghosts. So I said, just, just, you know, okay, all right. It was great talking to you, Dad. So I, I'm leaving now. I'm walking to my car down the street, and the guy is following me. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, hurry, hurry, I don't see any ghosts, I don't see any ghosts. Hey, ah, see any ghosts. So because he wants you to take it. 
of my face, you know, and that's what you see on TV. So I just, um, so then, <laughs> when I did it on TMZ, it would say, what is it, Ernie Hudson says he doesn't believe in that stuff. Well, what the hell is he doing all these movies for if he doesn't believe in it? <laughs> So, uh, no, actually, my problem is I probably believe too much in ghosts. You know what I mean? I get invited to go on ghost hunts. I'm like, really? I mean, <laughs> really? I mean, you really think I'm going to go? You know? Honestly, I got invited to a ghost hunt in Mississippi at midnight. <laughs> you know, I mean, they're going to find somebody there. <laughs> see a ghost. I, you know, I, I, no, it took me a long time to be able to sleep without turning the bathroom light on. You know? It would freak me out if I saw a ghost. I mean, it would really, you know, it, it would be bad. I don't want to see a So, I mean, they, they, they're really trying to find one. I'm like, well, good luck with that. Are you dead, stay dead. Leave me alone. I'll see you in some time, but not now. Not in my bedroom. Uh, you know, I, I'm going to try and take one more question because I, I know we're, we're reaching the end of our time here. And, and Jeff, sorry, I, I've seen you with your hand up. How did you uh, get the part when, uh, when the first Ghostbusters? Did you uh, know any of the, the cast members or people were disabled? Did they see that episode of Taxi? Um, you know, I'm not sure what they. I, I did a movie called Space Hunter. That was, um, this was how Hollywood works. It was, it was written, produced, directed by a guy named Jean Lefleur. He was from Canada. And so we went up to do the movie, and Jean Lefleur got fired. <laughs> and Ivan Reitman took over the movie. And, um, and I think Harold might have been one of the new writers who came in. And, um, and so we did with uh, Peter Weller. No, no, Peter, Peter Strauss, and Molly Ringwald, when she was a, a, a little kid. And, um, and so, um, and, 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 and so, about six months after the movie, I saw Ivan Reitman, who produced and directed Ghostbusters, on an elevator at Cedar Sinai Hospital. And, we, you know, you gotta go down from the 10th floor, and we're riding, and it's kind of quiet, you know, and he says, uh, I'm, 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 uh, I'm, I'm doing a movie um, with uh, Bill and Danny. I don't know Bill and Danny is really, and I go, and uh, he said, but there's nothing in it for you. And uh, I said, well, you know, okay, well, uh, good luck on that, you know. I didn't ask about the movie, I guess, okay, fine. And then later on, I found out that um, they, he was doing Ghostbusters, and it was Bill Murray and Dan Aykroyd. I'm not a big fan of Saturday Night, uh, I don't watch a lot of TV, so I still didn't realize how big they were. And uh, there was a part for a black, uh, actor, but whatever they had planned before, then they started seeing people, well, not just blacks, but just about anybody. My um, Hispanic neighbor, uh, he went in for Ghostbusters, <laughs> I mean, so, but they wouldn't see me because Ivan felt that I was in Space Hunter and the character in Space Hunter was sort of bigger than light and he drove this big kind of tank and he was, and I did a lower voice and my head was shaved. And he thought I was wrong for the, uh, you know, for the part. And after about three months, finally, after they saw the world, they decided to, to give me a chance to go in. I went in and I read the script and loved the script, and I just, uh, <coughs> you know, I was I was brilliant. Even I thought I was. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> you know, sometimes you come out going, now nah, I know it was good. I mean, <laughs> and uh, so they liked it, and then they they brought me back and. Uh, they wanted to screen test me, but and then they brought me back again, and then they brought me back again, and then they brought me back again, and then they called and said they wanted to screen test me, and then it looked like it might happen, but they were going to see somebody in New York, and uh, so they kind of went on like that. And finally, uh, when they absolutely could not find anybody else, <laughs> but they sure tried to find somebody else. Yeah. Um, they uh, they cast me. Why they cast me? I have no. Clue. I think they felt I probably could get along with just about everybody. I think that probably helped. Um, yeah. So you're you're an outstanding actor. We'll make sure that that. Is what
of that or whatever, but uh, I just really, really, I'm having a great time. This is one of the best cons I've done. You guys have been great, and I really, really appreciate being here with you. So thank you all so much. You're still with us.